bloodstream. It binds to her womb muscle cells and makes them contract violently. You okay? Yeah. I think I'll just go and lie down for a bit. Each time Marion has a contraction, it pulls the neck of her womb, her cervix, open a little further. Labor is a self-perpetuating cycle. Each contraction triggers more oxytocin to be released from Marion's brain. And more oxytocin triggers more forceful contractions. Once labor starts, it cannot stop. It can only get more intense. Right, keep breathing now. Hold it and push down. That's the girl. Keep it coming. Right, the deep breath in quickly. Hold it and push. And push. Yes. And again. It has taken 12 hours for Marion's cervix to dilate or open fully. Now she can push the baby's head into the birth canal. Yes, yes. Good girl. Another deep breath in, hold it, and push. Yes, come on. Deep breath in, hold it, and push up. Push up. Push up. Uh, don't bend my legs so much. I feel like a frog. <laughs> the pain of giving birth is the result of an evolutionary trade-off. Because humans have the largest brains, our babies have large heads. Give it that extra. Give it that extra. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Another, another, another quick one. Yet to walk upright, we need a rigid pelvis. Beautiful. Oh. The combination of an inflexible pelvis and a large head makes birth more agonizing for humans than any other species. Ah! 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 I can't. Oh. And again. And again. How traumatizing birth is for the baby, we can never know. But both Marion's brain and the fetus's brain release massive doses of natural painkillers called endorphins. Without them, it's possible that childbirth might be even more painful. It's still going. The baby breathes with its own lungs. It is no longer dependent on Marion's body for survival. One relationship is over, but a new one is about to begin. Up next, spawning of a different kind inside the human body. This one not nearly so nice, nor welcome. 
how the nasty flu co-opts cells to do its viral bidding and breeding and the biological warfare we wage against the invader. Holly Jones is a healthy young woman. Hi, Mayfield Stanley. Six Thank you. But her body is about to become a battlefield. Can you hold the doors, please? Hold on. A sneeze explodes into the area at 40 miles an hour, sweeping 100,000 droplets of mucus into every corner of the elevator. Excuse me. Bless you. Most of these droplets are harmless, but some carry living organisms which are highly infectious. These bacteria and tiny viruses will spawn inside a human body. The cold, dry air of the elevator will kill them in minutes. They urgently need to find another human host. I'm a singer. Are you hoping to give up your day job then? Yeah, the uniform's too hot. The invaders have found refuge in Holly's nose, but they're not safe yet. First, they must get through the forest of hairs which lines her nostril. These hairs are her first line of defense. They trap nearly every particle she breathes in. The invaders are swamped by a wave of mucus. For the bacteria, this is as far as they will get. An enzyme in the mucus dissolves them away. But just one spiky virus survives. As Holly breathes in again, she rips the virus from her nose hair and sucks it into the cavern of her nostril. This is one of the more common viruses, called influenza B. It's on a mission to multiply. And to do so, it has to hijack a particular kind of human cell found in the lining of Holly's throat. The virus is now at the top of Holly's nostril. If it can reach her throat, it has the power to cause her total misery. Her winding nasal passages are designed to trap invaders and wash them into her stomach to be destroyed. But Holly's own breath pulls the virus free yet again, closer and closer to her throat. That's from me to you. You gotta take it in your stride. You can't hide. You can't hide. You can't hide. Against all odds, the virus has made it to Holly's throat. As it burrows through a thick sea of mucus, it approaches the cells which are its target. Now it has to pull off one final trick. The flu virus has evolved to take advantage of the way that human cells work. Holly's cells communicate with each other using proteins as messengers. Hello, Korea. The spikes on the virus allow it to impersonate one of these proteins. It docks with receptors on the surface of Holly's cell. The cell is fooled. It reads the virus as a harmless protein. The virus 
slips inside. 